Hi, I'm Evan Curtis, the current artisan residency here at 970 West Studios in Mesa County Libraries. Today I'm here talking about my Foley work and sound design on my stop motion animation. The difference between animation and live action is that when you're filming a live action movie, you often are able to get sound on location with your actors and actresses and performers. Now a lot of times even live action is going to use sound design because if you're filming on a street, you're going to have cars in the background, you're going to have pedestrians walking by, maybe a plane flying over. So even live action still uses sound design and Foley work, but in animation, all of that has to be created because nothing is going to be recorded on site or on location while you're filming animation because there's no sound coming from these puppets, coming from these characters. They don't speak, they don't make a sound. So all of that has to be invented or created in a sound studio. For me, that's one of my most fun and enjoyable aspects of making my films because I think the animation is really cool. I'm proud of it but I also think the sound is what brings those worlds to life and makes them convincing to an audience that when you're watching a 12 inch puppet walk across a landscape, hearing those footsteps help convince you that that puppet really exists in that world and it's alive. So I'll go over a couple of techniques that I use when I'm filming and when I'm creating sounds. Um, traditionally, there's no specific rule or guidebook that says you have to use a certain sound for a specific sound on film. Most of what we see and hear doesn't often match up. Footsteps are not always from feet, and when you're dealing with fantasy characters or even real creatures that don't exist in the real world, such as dinosaurs, you have to make up what you think they sound like. And that's why sound design is a lot of fun, because you're really just inventing what these are. And what that invention involves is just going around your house and going around wherever you go, your school, your workplace, just around town, and listening to things differently and listening to how could that be a sound effect in a certain movie. So I'm just gonna go through this little bag of goodies that we have here and see what kinds of sounds you can get out of them. One place to start in your house would be the refrigerator. Uh, leftover food and any kind of food is really great for a lot of human sound effects. So uh, in one of my films, which was a reinterpretation of Night of the Living Dead, classic zombie movie, for the fleshy zombie noises, I would cut open a cantaloupe and just squish around the melon with my hands, use a hammer on it, use a knife on it, just to get a variety of those fleshy sounds. For something like the zombies tearing muscle or tearing through clothing, I would use watermelon because watermelon has more of a texture than cantaloupe and it's a little more porous, so you get that ripping noise. Uh, when it comes to bones breaking, sometimes I'll crunch a Kit Kat bar because it's got the soft layer of chocolate and then the hard layer of wafer, kind of like flesh over bone with flesh. Um, apples are really good for crunchy noises as well. Um, so start in, the, in your refrigerator, any kind of leftovers or whatever you're making, just start listening to how it sounds as you're eating it. Uh, all right, so let's see what we've got here. This is a coffee filter, paper texture. And let's see how this sounds. So you can kind of get an airy sound with it just as paper. almost like a fluttering sound. Something rustling in the bushes. Or you can test the, the tension on this. Maybe that could be wings. And again, once you pair it 
with your visuals, you can convince audiences that they're hearing what they're seeing, even if it's just a coffee filter. So I wouldn't use a coffee filter for the sound of a coffee filter, but I could use it for if a character were to throw their backpack on their back, or if they sit down in the bushes in the woods or take their jacket off and throw it onto a bush. That could have been the sound. Or if they spook a bird and it flies out of the bush. And you need a wing flutter. All right, let's see, what else? So this is the plastic portion of an envelope where you normally see the address. Has more of a crisp, tinny quality to it. That could possibly be something hitting a window. It could be, if you're thinking like science fiction movie, you could totally distort this into possibly like the sound of a sputtering little UFO going across the screen. Could be the sound of a stun gun. All right, bubble wrap. So you could pop it and use that. But again, if you crinkle it, and now if I crinkle it and pop it at the same time, we could sometimes emulate the sound of a campfire or a fireplace. So you could use that for a little like cartoon clay fireplace that would be pretty cool. And then the last item in this bag is a piece of string. That's gonna be really hard to hear. It doesn't, you don't quite have a whipping noise with this, but if you, again, kind of wrap it around your fingers and you go for the tension, You get this high-pitched, really unnatural sound. It doesn't really sound like anything identifiable. But that could be the chirping of, say, like a really adorable little character, like a Baby Yoda or a Pokemon or something that, that isn't a naturally occurring character or creature. So that would be that'd be pretty fun to play around with and figure out. Definitely a creature sound. Let's see, there's also a dried uh, sunflower. So this is gonna be really crinkly. And I'm just rubbing my fingers across the top This sound you could layer with the bubble wrap and add that to the campfire sound so that you get more than one sound effect. This could also be a creepy or eerie sound, almost like an ambient sound in a horror movie to just add tension and anxiety. This almost reminds me of say like, in Alien when the eggs open up. You could use this for a creepy sound effect to anticipate something dangerous is gonna happen, that something's opening up or a creature is shedding its skin or coming out of its exoskeleton. And these are just household items that you can find in your backyard, in your closet, um, sometimes for footsteps. So for example, when my characters are barefoot, if you see them 
walking across the screen barefoot, um, I'll sometimes record myself walking barefoot, but you can also emulate footsteps with your hand. So that would be a barefoot sound. You could also use your fist to get something more of a thud. So that would be a heavier character, a larger character. So that would be maybe a younger character kind of running and sliding their feet at the same time. So a younger type character that's not picking their feet up off the ground the whole way. So even when you don't have any objects, you can still make sound effects for your films.